Tyler, Tyler Shrimp, man. <laughs> what it do? You know what I mean? Carol City in this bitch. Mm. <laughs> all right, so we're live in the 99 Jam Studios. Your girl, Super Cindy, and it's all about this man right here. Is it? I got, yes, it is. <laughs> you have my undivided attention. It is Denzel Curry in the studio. What it do? Hi, Denzel. You said this is the first time you've been at 99 Jams. <laughs> I, you know what? You're damn right. It's the first time I was here for the first time ever, you know? But I mean? doesn't it feel good that you did it backwards? Like, you're already famous, and then you came here? <laughs> I mean, yeah, actually. I just, you know, because, I mean, it wasn't really supposed to be like that, because, like, I didn't really care for radio back then. Because mm-hmm. when we was coming up, the way I was coming up with, like, the whole Radio Clan movement and stuff like that, yeah. like, we didn't care about none of that. We didn't care about being on the radio or none of that. Speak about the Raider Clan. Like, how did you link up with them, and what is the Raider Clan for those that don't know? All right, for those that don't know, Raider Clan was a super group that consisted of Space Ghost Perp, myself, Young Simi, Nell, Rail, Xavier Wolf, Chris Travis, Eddie Baker, um, Amber London and Keen Ayata. And so there was a girl, in, two girls in it? A, no, one girl in it. One girl in it. Okay. It was one girl, and that How was did Amber. How you guys get together? Well, me and Pert met over Facebook, but I found out he was from Kara City after I heard his song. I can't even name, tell you the song, but, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, because it's so vulgar, the name is... <laughs> you can name, say it. We, 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 we can touch today. It's called SAND 2011, and SAND is an acronym for... No, you could... You oh, wait, we could curse? Yes. Oh, suck a nigga dip for 2011. That was the song. <laughs> you said I couldn't curse. No, he could curse. Well, we're shit, we're I'm in this bitch right now. Let's go. What's right up? <laughs> the fuck is going on? <laughs> but don't curse that much. Oh. We're going to make us edit a lot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then the group was together for how long? Like, how how long were you guys together? What we was, was your all together. Like? Yo, the movement was crazy. It didn't even got into a, like, it was crazy because when it first started, mm-hmm. Perp already went to New York to link up with ASAP Rocky because oh. ASAP Rocky and Perp was making shit back. They was making songs back mm-hmm. in the day then when perp came back here like asap mob and raider clan started beefing and then like it was just like either war on the streets and then when it came down to music they was asap mob was popular but when it came down to cult following mm-hmm. raider clan had it packed because it had like several personalities that everybody just knew like you know but my whole thing is is like who was the leader of the gr- of the raider clan was we was leader? all our own individuals but yeah. when it came down to people following well pert was technically the leader okay you know because he the one who started it but what i'm sa- what i want to know is like who who said yes or no to who was going to be in the group i know everybody named mama probably wanted to be in it it was it was pert so he either said yay or nay i'm feeling that I'm yeah nay. Feeling that, but know? me and pert built clan together pert okay. found xavier wolf chris travis eddie baker amber and key i found young semi nail rail and Renegade was already in the group. That's mm-hmm. somebody else I forgot to mention. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Young Renegade. That's still my dog to this day. But like, yeah, those are like those are the people. Pert was in New York and he was like, find some Raiders in Kara City. And the first one was Young Simi because Renegade was telling Simi about it, and then I was telling Simi about it, and then Simi joined. So how did you guys break up? What What was the reason? Just did it man, I can't no even disclose those reasons to oh, you, man. It's just tricks. that. But one day I remember. I took acid one day mm-hmm. and um, basically like um, Xavier, Chris, Eddie, Sky, like and Jay Green, all of them left clan that same day. Wow. Why? Oh, well, you say you can't tell why. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> like per- why? It was, I want to know. It was personal reasons, personal mm-hmm, reasons. Mm-hmm. But um, then after that, the next day I left Raider Clan. And this is when I was working on my um, album, Nostalgia 64, the first album I ever came out with. And um, Threats was already popular by then, but, mm-hmm. you know, it was kind of a rift between my management and Perks management and stuff like that. So so when, when you guys broke up, like, was it, like, did you feel like you were going through, like, a death? Like, is, was it sad for you or you were too I mean, busy? It was kind of sad because it was like, yo, I've been repping this for mad long. Mm-hmm. Plus, like, all the videos and stuff like that yeah. that we were doing. Shout out to Soldier Mook because that's my brother. My blood brother was mm-hmm. also in Raider Clan too. And like we were all like making stuff together, making music together. But it didn't stop the process of us making music together, but it did cause a rift between me and Perp. Oh, okay. You know? So And and today 
Oh, we go, we straight. Oh, it's it's cleared up now. Yeah, it's clear. <laughs> Would you guys yeah. do music together? Have you guys yeah. any music? Yeah, you do still do music together. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, what about the like since the group broke up? Are the other people all still making music, or some yeah. of them aren't? Some of them aren't, but the ones that did branch off and became their own thing, like this one dude. Um, I don't know if you know who Puya is. No. Puya's from Kendall. Puya's okay. doing his own thing, him and Fat Nick. Mm -hmm. But they were clan affiliated, and they did my first music video, which was strictly for my Raiders. Mm -hmm. And then you had um, you had Xavier Wolf, Chris Travis, and Eddie Baker. When they branched out, they teamed up with Bones, which was another Raider clan affiliate, and they became such Hollow Water Boys. That's who they became. Then Jay Green, when he branched out, he created Schema Posse, which had like Lil Peep, Ghost Mane. Ghost Mane's mm -hmm. actually from West Palm Beach. Wow. And um, they had this other dude, Craig Zinn, before Craig Zinn went to members only and teamed up with XXX Tentacion mm -hmm. and Ski Mask and them. Mm -hmm. Like, that's how I met Craig. So, like, everybody was branching off and doing their own thing. And that's how everybody was doing it. And, you know, I was doing my own thing, coming out with albums and mixtapes. And, like, came out with Ultimate, teamed up with X, and teamed up with Ski and all that stuff. And that's how everybody lives went. Discuss a little bit with me, like, how you, like, this movement is so far beyond that you guys don't have to be played on the radio or a BET or an MTV. And your fan base, when you show up at a festival to perform or have your own tours, is insanity. Discuss discuss that movement of, it like... It was the underground. Mm -hmm. All of it was the underground movement at one point. Mm -hmm. The people that you see that's big now, like Lil Pump or... Smoke Perp, mm -hmm. all those kids, like, all those dudes that came out, like, knew what Raider Clan was and knew what was happening back in the day. Even though they have their own influences, yeah. like Lil B's and Odd Future and Chief Keef and, you know, GBE mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Like, we was the main ones out of, like, Miami, like, to really be like, yo, we doing this. You feel me? And same with, um, we just grew with it. That's all it was. It was just us growing with it and, like, growing our, like, fan bases. But our fan bases, the people that just come in, like, mm -hmm. the new kids and stuff, they don't know the whole history behind everything. Of how it came about. Yeah. And so how did you guys spread your fan base? Through social media? It internet, was social like, media. Uh -huh. It was SoundCloud. We was the first ones using SoundCloud and stuff like that. Like, my first album I dropped on SoundCloud. So basically it was social media. Mm -hmm. We would, like, be on, like, Twitter, Facebook, Facebook especially, when it was like Facebook and Twitter, then but Facebook is shocking because like people your age say Facebook is for old people. No, back then <laughs> back when then it, it was wasn't cool for thing. old people, when okay. our moms and aunties <laughs> and like cousins Facebook. was not getting on <laughs> Facebook, we was using Facebook to promote everything. Mm. Like they'll be like, "Oh, Puya just came out with a tape." All right, we all tweet Puya tape. So many rules too, yeah. right? Back back then on Facebook, like so many. Like, uh, you know, filters and guidelines and you ha can't put that in that like it is now. Yeah. But like mm -hmm. back then we was just using whatever we could get on hands on. Mm -hmm. And it was like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube and um, God and that piff. Oh, oh man! Yeah, everybody, Dat Piff. everybody tapes came out on. Yeah, Dat I used to Piff. get the mixtapes off of that Piff. <laughs> yeah, we used to upload our own tapes, and like none of us couldn't afford to go to a studio, mm -hmm. so you recorded where at home <laughs> and we recorded at our houses and you with put like little mess no. no we would just mess around with a bear on audacity mixcraft mm -hmm. whatever we could record on mm -hmm. you know and um we'll just like we'll travel to other places to do like do features and stuff like that or they'll send it in and we'll do it and send it right back and we'll just put it out and have somebody who's on the internet just make the cover or whatever and um oh one of those people that leave a message i do graphics yeah Hit me no, up. no 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 <laughs> they'll just they'll come to us they're mm -hmm. like oh yeah i like what you do i like what perp does i like what puya does i like what um raider clan does i like what this asap stuff like that like oh if you need any graphics bro i got you if you need any beats i got you and they'll like, just okay. send it in <laughs> and then it got to a point where where people that would send us stuff in that we'll do this we'll do this we'll do this mm -hmm. and then you'll have people that had hard ass beats and we'll just be like yo that's mm -hmm. it and then we'll just keep using that producer or whoever you know yeah and we used to do shows but our shows we never used to get paid for them 
So you were just doing free shows and free shows and free shows? Free shows, free shows, free shows. Like, but it spread the word about you. Or you're saying that those yeah, free shows helped. The tapes, mm-hmm. the um free shows, everything, whatever. Skate parks it will spread the word. The videos will spread the word. Everything. That's awesome. So now you recording a, in professional studios now? Or? Yeah, but I still like recording <laughs> on a desktop. I don't care. Like, as <laughs> long as I like, can record it, mm-hmm. I, can, I can rock with it. I love that. So your latest work of, of art is Taboo. Why do, why in the title, every time I see it, you have a number 13 in it? Like, why did you do because the Because a 13 is a B. Is a what? It's oh, a B. So that's, 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 that's the that's meaning it. of it. Yeah. Okay, I was, all, if you I was look, thinking it was all deep. Like, what's the meaning? No, nah, the 13 is a B, but mm-hmm. it is a meaning to it. Okay. It just is. shows, like, everything, like, the... Everything associated with the number 13 is unlucky, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, shoot, 13 looks like a B. So I could connect B to black people. Black people are very unfortunate because our circumstances in life. Mm. And, you know, everybody has a superstition around 13. And, you know, just being in a black place or a dark place. Mm -hmm. And you don't even have to be African-American to be in a dark place in your life. Mm -hmm. So that's why I associated 13 and put that numerology out there. So people will understand, like, that's what it is. It's just Mm. like living in an unfortunate and unlucky world. You said earlier while we were speaking was that um, you were on acid and then something happened and that's, you know, something happened and then the the group raider, um, you guys broke up. But, like, why do you think this generation of artists and everything use so many drugs and stuff? Well, like, is that part of the movement? To well, I just did an experiment just to see what it was like, mm-hmm. you know? when It came down to me doing, like, psychedelics, like shrooms and yeah. smoking weed and, like... Mm-hmm taking acid and shit like i don't take acid i only took acid like five times but that was what like what does it in, feel like <laughs> i've never done it so i'm trying it's to like it. i'm gonna live through your life what, bro, what is it like it's like a it's like a really good it's so hard to describe the feeling but you feel good if it's you're in a good, good if you're around good people in a good space you're, you're, go, you're gonna feel good for like 10 hours mm. but we're gonna say don't do drugs yeah, to be i mean i'm correct. sober now i don't do anything oh congratulations like, i don't even smoke weed i've been a year and a half like is it it. hard because you're going through the circles of touring and no good good answer i'm like you have willpower (laughs) 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 Willpower. (laughs) all right so let's talk some more about taboo why did you break it down into into three acts because i didn't want fans to get confused of what act they was gonna be in Mm -hmm. because i did say i was gonna do three separate acts right Mm -hmm. and then you know if you look at kid cutty's project and it has acts they all have acts but you don't know what act you're going to be in mm-hmm. just by listening to the thing and not knowing that there's acts in there so i wanted i didn't want people to be confused i chose to put them out on three different days oh, okay, but they so. still got confused anyway thinking <laughs> that the four songs was the full project and i'm like you guys are stupid <laughs> stupid all right so let's discuss act one which was light yes okay let's talk about act one well with act one basically is like you know the light part of your life mm-hmm. you know even with everything that's going on, it's just like at the end of the tunnel, everything's going to be all right. Mm-hmm. Everything's going to be okay. But if you listen to the subject matter of a lot of things, like there are dark subject matters. Like I talked about molestation on the first track. Mm-hmm. And then you have stuff about like suicide, like talk about a black balloon, you know, let that be the day the pain stops when it pops finally. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and then it gets into like, yeah, you know, I got money, I got cash, I got, I'm carefree, like, I don't have to worry about, like, anything. So that's where you have tracks like Cash Maniac and Sumo, you know, like, just the, um, you know, when they say, like, happiness, money could buy or something like that. Yeah. You know, that's what that was supposed to represent, those two tracks. And... The first two was just like, you know, being in that place, but, you know, you're straying away from it because you're trying to focus on your happiness Mm -hmm. and you think money's going to bring you happiness, you know? Does money bring you happiness? No. Okay. Money doesn't bring me happiness. But what you can do with the money, that doesn't bring you happiness either? Nah. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) You're like, no, but did you ever think that it would before you had money? Yeah, I thought of you, you know, if you're rich, you wouldn't have a care in the world, but even... You ever heard the term rich people problems? Hello. Yeah. More money, more problems. Like exactly. Notorious B.I.G. So. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's talk about act two, which is gray. Mm, that's like, it's the longest part of the album. But gray is reality. 
That's when most of us are in gray. Yeah, most of the time because you don't know whether you're gonna have a good day or a bad day. It yeah, starts off with Super Saiyan Superman, which comes from the whole flexing aspect of Cash Maniac and Sumo. Mm-hmm. And then you have Super Saiyan Superman, which is another flexing track. And then you have Switch It Up, which is like people, you know, that's around you. The like the track Switch It Up is basically like people that you think is your friends aren't really your friends. And the people mm. that you think weren't your friends are your friends. The you ones who look out. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So that was what Switch It Up was about. And it just switched up the whole mood of the whole album. Mm-hmm. And then you got Mad I Got It, which is somebody coming from a perspective of somebody who doesn't have anything that will resort to doing anything just so he could say he has something in life. When he completely has nothing in life, mm-hmm. literally not even having something to live for, you know. Mm-hmm. So that was the message behind Mad I Got It. And like the whole great part is just like reality, like some that I seen, some things that I experienced and just that's what I wrote the great part for. And what what it, where did Clout Cobain come from? Oh man, that came that was from a sad place. Mm, and mm. it's in gray, right? Yes, yeah, in gray. So, like, because the thing is, is like, do you know who Kurt Cobain is? Of course, I know who Kurt Cobain is. Oh, I thought is. you were too young. No, man, I bought the <laughs> album Nevermind. Like, Nevermind is one of my favorite I was albums. You eleven? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, um, I could no. be eleven. <laughs> Shit. No, so like, what connection? with your art do you have to Kurt Cobain like why did you call it Clout Cobain because everybody I'm, I'm just saying mm-hmm. everybody that I've seen in the rap game and anywhere they worship Kurt Cobain yeah. but they worship him for the wrong reason, reason. you mm-hmm. know like if you could say yeah I'm a fan of grunge I like you know mm-hmm. I like Nirvana, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But, you know, the suicide, the clothes, everything about him. Everything that Kurt Cobain didn't want to be is what everybody worshipped about more. Kurt mm. Cobain, you know? And so and what, then, what is Clout Cobain about? Like, So what, what Clout, uh-huh. everybody would do the dumbest shit for Clout. For Clout. Excuse my Nowadays, French. Nowadays, for real. They'll do the dumbest things for Clout. But that's what's getting They'll, people popular at this current moment. Exactly. As but it's been like that for years. Mm-hmm. Clout. But clout. it's heavier now. Everything is Clout. But it's so... Like, clout became, you know, just a casual word that you just throw around to a disease that mm-hmm. everybody wants. And you'll do whatever it takes to get a little bit of clout. Mm. You know? Just to have your 15 minutes of fame. That's what it is. Like, give me the clout. I want clout. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's they just doing that for outcome. clout. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> like, oh, he's just saying this for clout. You're an idiot. You know what I'm saying? It could be their own mama doing something for their son. And they'd be like, oh, she's just doing that for clout. Like... <laughs> using the word wrong all like you place. using the wrong yeah so since everybody wants clout and everybody likes Kurt Cobain I'll just put them together and the video's dope like you actually did your look like Kurt Cobain yeah was I that mean, how was the set like what, what was the vibe it was a circuit and it was funny it was just <laughs> like camel shitting everywhere <laughs> you know no nah, a bunch of kids getting fake face tats and mm. acting like they was drowsy and stuff but no nah, just interacting with all the people that was on that set are really cool and they was all dope even the people who worked on the video shout out to zev dean he was like he was really dope working on it and um yeah like even when it came down to the idea it was literally mark's idea i you know what i'm saying mark's mm. idea to do the whole like yeah, mark what's up crutches and he, he was like because and the whole thing spawned from like a little lyric that i said mm-hmm. and i was like i'm at the clout circus with the loud rolling you know and we was just like it's funny how like artists treat festivals like a clout circus mm-hmm. and that's basically what it is the clout circus you know what i'm saying so when we was just like thinking about ideas and he was like yo why don't you just do the clout circus and i was like at first i was like nah but like i thought about it i was like wait a minute you know, that's actually pretty fucking smart. <laughs> and then he was like, yeah. And then he t- thought about the clothes. And then when it came down to the video and getting everything, you know, treatments and everything for mm-hmm. it, long as it fit my vision, mm-hmm. I told him like the stuff I wanted. I wanted balloons to pop. I wanted it to feel like the gray area. And mm-hmm. I wanted it to be, I don't care what you do. Long as the shit's bizarre as fuck. Okay. You know, all my videos that I was going to do for this project has to be somewhat, some way dream state and bizarre. Mm. And bizarre is such a broad word, because bizarre could be a lot. No, of I'm things, talking about so. bizarre. No, but that's what I'm saying. Bizarre to the fiftieth power, but I'm saying like bizarre could mean many things, because it's honestly 
what's bizarre to you might not be bizarre to me or vice versa. So you yeah. you have an open range of making bizarre out of this world bizarre. Yeah, like, but it madness. seems like bizarre is actually the truth because, you yeah. know, they term truth is stranger than fiction. Okay. You know, <laughs> exactly. so like when we did the video, I got a call from him and I was like, all right, they got the video. They getting the video together. They was like, hey, one more thing they wanted to ask you. I was like, what's up? You want to kill yourself in the video? And then I thought to myself, like, mm. fuck yeah, let's oh do it. Lord. I was like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I was like, yo, I'm ready. I want to kill myself. Not uh, in real life, no, though. in the video. But in the video, I, I wanted to die. Yeah, like, I like wanted to die. Bizarre. Like, I was like, I definitely want to die in here. Well, I, you know, Cloud, Cloud Cobain is, uh, is a dope-ass song. And then you went, the third um, act is Dark. Yeah. So that's darker than gray obviously yeah, of course so what does dark mean dark is like when you don't care about anything Dang. anymore literally like from man i got it was like foreshadowing how my how life was going to be mm-hmm. at the ending usually when i was working towards my happiness mm-hmm. coming from a dark place from 2016 2017 going into 2018 happy mm-hmm. i made the album backwards because I never make my albums backwards. Mm-hmm. Usually my albums start off dark and it goes light. Like Imperial, I could say that whole album was either dark or gray. Mm. You know? Mm-hmm. But when Nostalgic, it was like, you know, it started off it started off very dark and then it went to light. Then you heard like my EPs like from Three Two Zell Planet Shrooms. Like one side was like dark and the other side was like light, you know? Mm-hmm. And then you had thirteen, which was like very distorted. It was mm-hmm. kind of dark. So mm-hmm. like I incorporated all this stuff because I went back and listened to everything I did. And like just figuring out what bits and pieces I could put in an album. And when it came down to the dark part, I was just like, this is the part where I just don't care about nothing in life. Because mm. I literally was at a point in my life where I didn't care about nothing. Mm. Like, I know that feeling. I know the feeling of not caring. Like, not caring, caring about myself, people around me, not being considerate. Just everything, snapping on people. That's how I was. And that's what the reflection of the black part I wanted it to be. Just brutal and angry. How do you get out of a place like that? I, I was about to say the sunken place, but I mean, how do you get out of, out of the dark place when you're feeling like that? Good energy, good people around you, just mm-hmm. like being aware of your actions and mm-hmm. like stopping certain things you were doing to really focus on yourself. Really, isolation is what helped me get out of that dark place. Did I had, you had a, a lot of people around you at that time when you were dark or no? Yeah. I, yeah. I had a lot of the wrong people around me, so... So what happened to those people? Now you kicked I left. Them? No, oh. I left Miami. I left oh. for a year. I left like Where did you go? Almost 2 years. I live in Cali now, so. Oh, okay. So you don't even live here anymore? No. Nah. You don't live by Caromar and they took it away? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nah. Nah, I was living there though when I was going through the dark part of my then, life. Then that's understandable. Now that you say that, I get what you're saying about the dark place. Cuz yeah. that's a that's a place where a lot of things and and this place called Miami is special. <laughs> Because you have to be tough to survive this place when you're in a space that you're known and stuff like that. Miami is... Yeah. People will will have you thinking they're the best of your friends and they are just venomous, deadly, and deathly. Five deadly venoms. Hello. Okay. So I am super happy that you relocated. So please talk to me about being featured on EA Sports. I'm on EA Sports? Aren't you? No, I was just messing with oh, you. <laughs> I, I reported it the other day on the radio. Like, oh, home team, Denzel Curry's on EA Sports. Hey, man. <laughs> one of those songs that they put on was one of the songs on the album, which was we, Sumo. We, oh, so Sumo. They took Sumo. Yeah. It wasn't Cloud Cobain. And, and it was from the light. <laughs> the it was light from the light photo. part. The act. It was from... The light part. So how do you think you'll react when you're playing Madden? Do you play Madden? Nope. Oh, I'm not a player. I was going to say, how does no, it feel when you're playing? I only you're play like fighting play. games. That's what people got to know. I only play fighting games. And Except they Marvel vs. Capcom. I play Tekken. <laughs> I play Mortal Kombat. Okay. I play uh, Street Fighter. Mm-hmm. I suck at Street Fighter. But anyway, <laughs> but Marvel vs. Capcom, I do not play. I play Naruto. I can play that. Dragon Ball Z, I can play that. But like... Not no Marvel vs. Capcom though. No, no disrespect. <laughs> it's just that he'll kick my ass. So. <laughs> Majorly. Yeah. So, but how does it feel Majorly. like that? You're on a major, major video game that, like, every year it's like the biggest thing. Wouldn't be the first video. time. 
What? Wait, you've been on other video games? Tell me, please. Yeah, they what? played a song with me and Akali mm-hmm. on a commercial for 2K18, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you're like, whatever. I mean, you're appreciative. I'm appreciative. Like, I'm, I'm humbled. I, I'm i just humbled about it. But how does it work by being on a sports game? Do you get a check for everybody or every person that buys the game? Or how does it work? Uh, I think you just get a sync licensing check. Yeah. Oh, okay, a sync licensing check. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, but a check is a check. So let's check appreciate check. that check. Mm-hmm. And I also wanted to talk to you. We spoke about off the air where you're originally from, Carroll City. Yup. So, what was it like growing up in Carroll City? Straight. Did what like <laughs> element? You're like mm, all right. What elementary school and school did you go to? Did you go to my elementary school? I went to was Crestview Elementary. Oh, Crestview. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My daycare. You want to know all that? If you want to know the <laughs> yeah. Nitty-gritty. What was your daycare teacher? My name? daycare. <laughs> I went to Pink and Blue in oh. Opelika. Oh, I don't know that one. That was my daycare. That's your daycare? And what, what high school did you go to? Or were you I went to Design and Architecture Senior High. I Where's got kicked that? out the first two years. My first two years of high school, I got mm-hmm. kicked out. My second two years of high school, I did Kara City High. Oh, but where's Design and Architect? Where's that school? That's in... What, the design district. Oh, down there, that school by Wynwood, that way. Okay. Yeah, it was like, supposed to be artsy and creative. Yeah, and, that's where all the New World, Mass Kids, yeah, Dash okay. Kids, like, it's mm-hmm. called Dash, mm-hmm. but like, that. I went to Dash. Okay. And it sucked. <laughs> I'm going to still like, bash Dash. I don't care. You, you, you're you able to bash whatever you want at this point in your career. Exactly. Because you made it. Yeah, I, I want to say F a couple teachers, but I'm going to leave it alone. I'm no, alone. like them knowing that you're successful and you don't even remember their names is like very... No, nah, no, nah, but I remember their names, though. <laughs> you're I just, I just want to... I just want to... Bitch, no! Yeah, but it was, you know, you know, it's just, you got you to gotta spot in here because, mm. you know, it's... They could have broke you. Yeah, it, no, it wasn't. They was uh, never gonna break me. Okay, good. I wasn't breakable. Anyway, okay, good. I'm unbreakable. Good answer. You feel me? But I the, I ain't saying day. I ain't saying fuck them. I'm saying fuck them. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you. Well, let's just leave it at that. Fuck them. Fuck the teacher. Yeah. Um. So except Miss Paris, because that was my writing teacher, and Mr. Martinez, oh, okay. and Mr. Charles. So those people, you'll give them That's, high five. And um, Mr. Shinovsky. That's it. They get high five. Oh, and Mr. Burgess. At least some of them, you remember their names still. And, you give them and my auntie, um, Betty, she worked at that school, too. She did janitor and security. Oh, so when you were going through issues over there, what was Aunt Betty saying? Like, just <sighs> relax or... Man, you know, she no, nah, she was chilling. She was chilling. But other than that, they kicked me out anyway. I don't mm. give a damn. But I still made something out of everything myself. Everything happens. But that's what I'm saying. Everything happens. You would have probably stayed there and no, everything would have been different. Exactly. I probably would have hated art. That's what I'm saying. So them kicking me out only made me appreciate art. Okay, so they did you a favor. Hmm. <laughs> but, like, you know, it kind of oh. backfired on them, though, because it was like, yeah, you know, they kicked me out. Now they want to put me on Wikipedia as they alumni. And I was like, nigga, I didn't even graduate from this shit. So they're, you're on their Wikipedia? As in, like, um, notable alumni. Wow! You see how they just, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, that, that's where you start saying, fuck Mrs. Blah Blah and fuck Mr. This. And <laughs> that's crazy. That's what I'm saying. You're though. on their alumni. That's crazy. It's crazy, funny as hell. Crazy. But Kara City got me as their alumni. So I'd rather be a chief than a bitch ass <laughs> phantom any day. I don't give a damn. <laughs> Chief's rule, okay? Chief's rule. So Billboard just named you. Um, Did you hear about this? You're like number seven. Where is it? I wrote it down. On the um, emerging artist list on Word. Billboard, but do you feel like you're an emerging artist, or you're just an emerging artist to some? Because you're already an esta- like an established artist, or what do you feel about that? Hey man, Psst. they were sleep. <laughs> <laughs> They've been sleeping for some years. Nah, but it's, it's all jokes aside. But mm-hmm. um, hey, you know what I mean, like I said, I'm humble. It's cool, you know. Mm-hmm. Long as I just show everybody I could get on Billboard and mm-hmm. get to emerging artists. Now it's just to show them that I'm that artist. And you're and you're doing all these things the non traditional way. That's the whole thing. But the thing is, the non traditional way is actually traditional. The way that yeah, that's what I'm saying. The non traditional way is the way it should be traditional now, and it is traditional. You that's think, the way most people are famous now. You think people innovate and get big because they go by the book? If Hell people no. went by the book, we'll still be rapping like the '80s right now. <laughs> well, at least rap like the '90s. That was that was kind of. See, nah, the '90s. <laughs> see, the, the '90s. 90s, is 90s yeah, '90s hip hop is raw. <laughs> I wanted to ask you a question because I read somewhere 
that um, what was your relationship to Triple X Tentacion? Were you friends with him? You just knew him because of the industry? Like how that was, was my it? dog? Like oh, you, you know we cool. had ups and downs. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong, yeah, but as, as normal friends sometimes do. Like, but he used to live with me. We all used to stay at the ULT house. Oh, I did not know that part. We used so, to live together when he didn't have a um place to stay and everything, and mm-hmm. we met, but completely on accident. How was that? It was like. This dude named Abyss invited them to a house party I was throwing. Mm-hmm. And then Ski Mask, you know, Ski Mask, a slump guy, yes. he came up to me. And he, they was with, it was Ski Mask X and a couple other people. Mm-hmm. And it was like, oh, we came here to perform. And I was like, perform? And I'm drunk. So I'm like, who the hell told you that? So I thought it was this <laughs> one dude. I ain't performing at my party. And I was like, so who, who told you that? So I went up to the dude like, you told them they could perform? They thought I was going to kick them out. Mm-hmm. You know, and I was like, nah, just respect my crib. Y'all can do whatever. Y'all work on the video games, chill, drink, party, females, all that, mm-hmm. you know. And then after um time went by, you know, I kept seeing Ski off and on, kept seeing Ski off and on. I haven't seen X until um this dude that I know came to my crib mm-hmm. and he was like, bro. Dog, it's these young dudes. They was at CD4 and they lit. They killed it. And I was like, who are you talking about? He's like, bro, I'm going to play you something. So the first thing I heard, the first song I heard from them was called Fuck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it was spelled like F-U-X-K. That was okay. the first song I heard from them. And I was like, I was thinking like, yeah, you know. But the first time I heard it, I was like, oh, this is fire. Surprisingly, it was fire. Mm-hmm. And it was coming from home. And I was like, whoa, this is fire. And then... He was like, fool, you seen Jit before. You seen Jit. I was like, what are you talking about? You seen Jit before. I was like, show me a picture. So he showed me a picture. I was like, still don't kind of remember. I don't mm-hmm. remember him. Mm-hmm. Because it was so brief at that um house party. Like the house where you were drunk, you drink. Yeah, he was showing me a picture of X. And I was mm-hmm. like, it was so brief. And I was like, nah, I don't remember him. But I was playing their music. I was playing I Love It When They Run. I was mm-hmm. playing like, you know, he didn't. I didn't hear um Look At Me Yet. He didn't play me Look At Me Yet. But like. It was already out. Okay. But I was listening, like, the one song I was mainly listening to was, like, I love them when they run, Freddy versus Jason. Like, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, man, these, this was um 20, like, the ending of 2015. Okay. When it was happening. And then, like, one day, Kodak had a show. Mm-hmm. And it was, like, it was the end of the year. It was, like, on New Year's. He had a show on New Year's on the end of 2015. Mm-hmm. And then when I went to the show, X and all of them were there. And okay. I look at X, I'm like... Bro, <laughs> you came to my house. And he was like, yeah, we came to your crib. <laughs> and then we was just talking. And I was like, man, like, I really like that song that you're doing. Yo, let's link up. Let's do this thing. He was like, he was like, all right, cool. I got to go to Denver. But when I come back, we linking up and we top, chopping it up and we're talking. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right, say no more. Just let me know when you're back in town. Mm-hmm. So he goes out of town, comes back in town. He pulls up in the um, van. Him. Ski all them Like they Come to my house We had a meeting And we was just like We want y'all part of ULT First Mm -hmm. thing he was like Fool I don't fucking know you bro (laughs) He was like He was like I don't know you Like that You feel me Mm -hmm. So is this like a Business opportunity Or is this a friendship And I was like It's both Mm -hmm. And that's how Me and him met And then And people probably Ain't used to that Like they just think People are out to get him And stuff like that So that's why he had to ask Like wait And this was like Early 2016 And Mm -hmm. then we started Making songs Like I made more songs With Ski than with X Me and Mm -hmm. X only have one song And it's actually A diss track Towards Space Goes Perp Wow (laughs) And the song's called Space Goes Pussy Oh wow And it's only a minute And 54 minutes long can I mean, people hear one, it? Or one no? minute and fifty four like seconds long. Like in a lost file. Yeah, SoundCloud, oh, it's on SoundCloud, YouTube. It's like on. It got four million views on YouTube. Okay. It got a million, like almost. I don't know how many, how much it got on SoundCloud because we released it through Ronnie J SoundCloud, and then from then, like X was just staying at my crib. Mm. How long did was his stay? Like how long? Like about it was. Long? It was for a few months until I moved out. One one of my homies lost his job at Whole Foods. Mm-hmm. I lo- oh god, I'm dying. It wasn't to find him. Some- it was not him. Okay. It was not him. But I'm dying to find someone who works at Whole Foods. Yeah, but <laughs> I need um, to hook up. <laughs> oh yo, you need to you need to hook I need up. The Whole Foods is good. You got that? You got that? Let's talk about uh, not, that. Off yeah, 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 I got you. I got you. <laughs> but it's not me though. You got to talk to. The- Okay, the, the you know, plug. Okay. The plug. The plug. I'll talk to the, the plug, plug after. The plug. You know what I'm saying? But so. yeah, man. Like, we stayed there briefly. Then mm-hmm. he stayed with this dude named Bruno. But we will go over to Bruno's house and visit X. Okay. And stuff like that. But like, there'll be times where we was in the house, like, 
it would be funny as hell because like you know we'll be wrestling in the house fighting in the house <laughs> like making music and going to probably a tropical had <laughs> <laughs> the obsession yeah and that's <laughs> what it was that was literally what it was in the house like he made um he made him he made 17 yo hood in my house him and ronnie J was really working together because i was always traveling mm-hmm. but me and him would facetime when i would travel and stuff like that where were you when you found out what happened to him i was actually in miami when it happened whoa had you spoken to him well, we spoke last like in may mm-hmm. like we spoke and then we spoke again in june mm-hmm. but when we spoke in may we had a like a three hour conversation wow about everything everything i'm talking about everything whenever me and x would talk it would be a long conversations mm. like very long conversations very long he like he'll talk and i'll talk you know it's just long conversations and he'll explain things and i'll explain things and but the last conversation we literally got down to like what bothered him about me and what bothered me about him and just everything we cleared the air on a whole bunch of things yo. wow what was the reason that you guys did that at that moment i don't know it was just like because i hit him up on i was in germany when it happened i was in germany when we was talking mm-hmm. and like he posted a pit he posted a video of him boxing and this is when he had blue hair so okay. he posted a video of him boxing and me and mark was chilling and i was like yo i should hit him up he was like hit him up so i sent them um I texted him. I was like, "Evolve," like in the DM, mm-hmm. and he was like, "Always." And I was like, "Let's get a training session in too," because he's into like boxing and martial arts. I'm into boxing and martial arts, and mm-hmm. we was both doing them around the same time. Mm-hmm. And like, and I was like, "Let's get a, t- a training session in." And um, he hits me back like a few minutes later. He was like, "Yo, you should have never left South Florida. We could have been plotting on so much." And I was like, I hit him back, and I was like, "No, like." I left for a reason, and the reason why I left was this, like, I didn't tell him, like, the reason why I left until we got on the phone, but mainly I told him I was, like, leaving here was the smartest thing I ever did. The Mm. smartest thing I ever did. Did he understand that? He didn't understand until we got on the phone and talked about it, yeah. So, like, I think that's awesome that you had the opportunity to clear the air with him and everything, like, before that tragic incident. You know what I mean? Mm. how how things just fall, like happen and you don't even know like what's happening in the future like it did wow that's crazy so i'm really glad that you did that and thanks for sharing that oh you didn't okay. have to so so who, who would you describe as your fans who are your fans denzel everybody <laughs> everybody like, how would you describe them like the teacher wearing glasses the girl no who works go to the skate park got a <laughs> shoestring for a belt mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> dirty vans <laughs> like vulgar attitude probably hispanic probably white mm-hmm. couple blacks couple females if they're <laughs> into that well most now more females is coming out since Clark Cobain and mm-hmm. This Life and yeah. all the, the singing part of the album and yeah. <laughs> me being more melodic. Now that's I don't know how that demographic is going to look, but mainly my demographic is just like teenagers. How does your family? Because when we were outside of the BT Awards when it was on South Beach, and that was the first yeah. time I visually met you, your mom was with you. She's like Super Cindy from Ninety Nine Jams. I'm like, yeah. What? See, look, me and my dad, <laughs> me and my father, uh-huh. we think alike, uh-huh. you know. <laughs> but me and my mom, we act alike. Okay. <laughs> like so, I'm my like everything I'm interested, mm-hmm. all my interests and stuff. Mm-hmm. Me and my dad have the same interests, mm. think the same, act like. But when it comes down, like. You know, like, personality-wise, I think I get that from my mom and my dad. Because my dad's funny as hell. Yeah, because both of you, I was like, are you Denzel Curry? I'm Super Cindy because I'd never seen you yeah. in person. And you're like, oh. And then your mom's like, wait, Super Cindy. <laughs> it was yeah. mad dope. So high five to My mom to said you got a dunk. I do got a dunk. <laughs> Did she tell me that dance thing? Or you know, after I left? No, because I do. What you want me to do? It's in the Miami water. I don't. Hey, I can't explain it. Hey, I don't freaking know. Hey, my mom said it. <laughs> yeah, your mom was mad cool when I met her. So shouts to Mama Curry or what, yeah, what's her Yeah, you call her Mama Curry. Okay, I'm gonna call her Mama Curry. And um, last but definitely not least, um, how do you communicate with your fans? Instagram. Or is it you on your Instagram or is it interns and managers and helpers? Let's not talk about that deal. Okay. <laughs> but, but like if they DM, will it get to you even if it's not? Oh, no. Yeah, it's going to get to me, man. Okay, it's going to get you. It's going to get to me. Only if it's worthy. I pick. <laughs> What's worthy? Okay. 
one kid it, texted me. He was like, Denzel, my girl's going to let me get laid if you hit me back. And uh, I was like, well, <laughs> I guess you're getting laid. <laughs> <laughs> he was just testing. I'm sure that wasn't true. No, nah, but hey, hey, it, I don't know. You're here to help. <laughs> I don't know. It was like, bro, you, you approached me about you getting laid. Right, shit. <laughs> I'll help the cause. Right. Let everybody know where's the social media is where they can follow your movement, Denzel. All right, you could catch me on Twitter, Denzel Curry. Mm-hmm. You catch me on Instagram at Denzel Curry PH all together. Hello. And you could catch me on YouTube, Denzel Curry mm-hmm. PH all together. Okay. And you catch me on Facebook. Denzel Curry fan page. You okay. catch me on Facebook, <laughs> Denzel Aquarius Killer Curry, at me as a friend. Okay. Probably won't at you back because I don't use that shit. <laughs> you moved on? Yep. Because <laughs> I'm a family member, started getting on. <laughs> <laughs> you see what Denzel did last week? Mm-hmm. <laughs> all, all in the sauce. <laughs> all up in the sauce, but that's where you can find me. And if not, catch me on the street. Yeah, wait, where are you going to be on stage? Like, where can... Because I saw that tour you have, and it's not stopping here. <laughs> I'm not surprised, though. <laughs> but you're going to, like, Tampa or somewhere close, or are, are you? Break the news here. Are you stopping here? Nah, I ain't, nah, nah, nah. mm-hmm. I ain't going to break the news, yeah. Is it in the yeah. works? <laughs> you know what? We'll, just, we'll keep following you. Just follow. Here, I guess. You just got to follow. But when I, when I reported it on my Skirt with the Dirt report, I did say, you know, I, I can't remember where it is announced that you're going to be Tampa or somewhere. Tampa and Orlando, yeah. Okay, I said, hey, going to be Orlando three hours away, Tampa a, a bit further. Mm-hmm. So I did. But if I come back home mm-hmm. and do a show, it's going to be special because I, I haven't know. did a show here in a long time. But that's what I'm saying. So that's why I'm going to keep following your movement so I could see because I've never seen you perform live I'm <sighs> embarrassed to say I'm ashamed you sh- you should come to Tampa or Orlando <laughs> whichever the two uh huh uh, yo but will I get sucked into a mosh pit or something I'm afraid of no 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 we ain't gonna no nah, nah, you'll <laughs> be on like, stage I can't handle a mosh pit I'm you like, gonna, excuse no no nah, nah, you gonna be on stage <laughs> oh, okay oh, but I we might throw but, but we might throw you in the crowd <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> nah it's crowd surf just no, do it just I'll do it scared. one time they'll be feeling on my booty what will I do I'll be like nah. I mean it's not, your, it's not I mean if you wearing pants you straight you know <laughs> like, like really I mean they gonna yeah but I might if you jump it. really fast, they would not know. They'll, they'll just be like, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't even know. That would be awesome, but I'd probably be such a scaredy cat of what would happen to me if I was. Ain't nothing going to happen to you. Hey, look. Hey, <laughs> hey, just all you got to do is just fall. All right, I'm going to look at your dates again to see where it be in. Let's, let's work it out. Let's see. It get crazy. <laughs> I'm going to wear a GoPro when I do it. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Super Cindy, <laughs> and I'm going to experience my first crowd surf ever. Yeah. <laughs> that would be insane. <laughs> that would be dope. You should do it. Oh, my God. I'm going I to a Disney Curry show. That. I don't know what to expect, but, you know. <laughs> We're going to adventure. Just film the whole, document the whole thing. Hey, fuck it. Leap. Right. It's like, yeah, but they don't catch you. You can't blame me. Oh, my God. You can't sue now me. Now you're like nah, making me not want to nah, do they it. Gonna, they're going to catch you, though. What, like, mm-hmm. Well, we'll see. Let's talk about it Tampa, another day. Ta- what, which one? Tampa's, Tampa is lit. Tampa's Tampa lit. Crazy. But Tampa is crazy. The last Tampa, Tampa was lit. Oh, I can't compare the two. Food. They're, they, both, they're the both like, food they're both wild, though. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're both wild. They're both are pretty crazy. So congratulations on, on this movement that you have and your own personal development and growth. And I'm so glad that, you know, I got the heads up on you and met you. And now I'm interviewing you. And it's just dope. And you're from Carroll City representing CC, the 305. Blackland. Yep. And now you live. What part of um, California you live in? Can't tell you that, Pim. Uh, can't tell you yeah, that. I was about to just can't say, tell you can that. I stay with you when I come? Nah, because you know, <laughs> somebody might be like, oh, this nigga's in California. Okay, in that section. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you feel me? Denzel, thanks for stopping by. Your girl, Super Cindy, Denzel Curry. Yeet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>